All right, hello, hello, hello. This is your boy Bebo. I'm here doing a uh, another podcast. It's been a minute since we last had a podcast on the channel, uh, but I think I wanted to change some shit up here. I added a little bit of a um, video call with my boy Vic over here, so we're doing our first time around here as a podcast. We tried to record a podcast before, but my dumbass left it on my old computer, and I wiped my old computer like an idiot. So that's. That's, that was very disappointing for a while. It was very unmotivational, but, you know, we got around to doing it again. So, hopefully, you know, this will be a good one, yeah? So, before uh, I, we get into it, I wanted to note that um, I was just talking to Vic, and we actually got into an interesting topic uh, about how, you know, he wants to open up a restaurant. Or Obviously, you guys won't know, but I did, I did know this, that, that Vic over here wanted to open a restaurant, and so he started talking about his ideas. Uh, Vic... Do you want to talk about Ed, you know, the type and all that? So, um, oh, well, I, so I had two ideas. So, um, the first idea was, you know, traditional French cuisine. Um, I feel like there isn't really a, a big mark. There's not really a lot of, uh, um, a market of that, uh, right now. You don't, you only, you don't have a lot of, uh, French cuisine restaurants. You have, you know, bakeries, but, not not high cuisine right and uh and same thing with italian cuisine too uh you know you have pizzerias you know uh but not 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 high cuisine so what i wanted to do was uh like a traditional mediterranean restaurant and um you know sell like really high quality uh food you know uh non-gmo you know locally grown uh try and find suppliers that, you know, that I trust, you know, with a pretty uh, strict degree of regulations, um, you know, so, so that, so that was one idea. And the other idea was, um, so uh, completely the opposite, but modern, very modern uh, restaurant with cultured meat. Right, right. right. Architecture wise, well, architecture wise, think of like a like a nightclub, you know, like a high end nightclub or even an iPhone store. Right. right. Um, but so so you know, really futuristic, uh, you know, the simple kind of all white design, and so cultured meat. What it is is it's meat that's grown in a laboratory. So you you're not actually you know killing an animal. You're you're, you're growing uh, the the tissues in the laboratory. Right. And so, you know, well, obviously, you know, ethically, you know, th there's no ethical dilemma with that. Um, it, it's also, um, uh, a, it, it take, it's also a lot better for the environment. It, it takes, it takes up a lot less water, a lot less land, uh, you know, similar to, um, a vertical, uh, um, you know, agriculture, right? I don't know if you've ever heard of that in vertical towers, ag, you know? Yeah, 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 vertical agriculture. So, is so that you know, real quick, is that where they layer the the fields in like the, uh, obviously vertically, so that way it's um yep it doesn't in a tower really, yeah it doesn't really fuck with the soil from underneath for example so there's different levels. Exactly. Right. Okay. Um. And uh. So. There, there's the the benefits. Uh, environmentally speaking, are are tremendous, and the benefit, health benefits of it, could also be a lot better because, because it's a controlled environment, you don't need to to add all the antibiotics, uh, and, and everything, uh, you know, hormones, whatever. Right. You you can grow the meat, you know, however you want, boneless, uh, everything. Um, Right now, the issue is is that it's not mass produced, so it's still very expensive. Uh, but once once it's mass produced, uh, you, the 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 benefits that you know for the environment will be tremendous, and you know for society in general. Um, but in order to do so, we need to get over the hurdle of you know the public accepting that. And so what I wanted to do is, you know, have a restaurant that, you know, provides such culture meat to, to try and, you know, help mainstream it, you know, make mm -hmm. it more socially acceptable to, you know, eat that. Now, 
bef- I just want to stop you real quick. You mentioned earlier that uh, it wouldn't get in the way of ethics, right? Because there's a lot of people that are like, well, you're killing all the animals. Like, that's why I'm vegetarian, for example. You know, I don't want to see animals die just so I can eat meat. And that would solve No that. animals are killed. Right, right. That it's, would solve that issue. It's just muscle tissue being grown. Now, here's the part where I have a question for you. Because you mentioned ethics. So how would that, how would you feel or, or what would you do against, you know, I guess, heavily religious people that say, oh, you shouldn't be creating lab-grown meat, you know, that's like against God's way, or et cetera, et cetera. How would you go and counter-argue their, their problem? Because I feel like, now before you start talking, I feel like, you know, it's a great idea. All A lot of people would probably be on board. A lot of the new generation of people would be on board, right? Our generation. But how would you fight against the massive amount of older generations that would be like, all right, this is against like my my religion, et cetera, et cetera. Like it would face a lot of backlash. Well, you you see that issue with a lot of you know progress that you know people are trying to make. You always have people that resist that progress that you know try and uh, you know uh, halt it. Um, I I think with you know religion, especially the Abrahamic religions, you know uh, Judaism, uh, it, you know Christianity and Islam, uh, it, it's a very uh, strict and, and rigorous religion uh, it doesn't allow for a lot of elasticity mm. uh, a lot of adaptation to to you know uh, um Modern current things. circumstances right um so you know there's it's definitely kind of an issue um i mean you know people are convinced that you know that it's true i mean i i used to be uh religious um, you know, and I, and I was convinced that, you know, that, that, that was the truth, but, uh, you know, through my life, the things that I've learned, I've, I've eventually, you know, um, uh, slowly, you know, came to, to, to the conclusion that I don't believe in that. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know how you, how you convince people, you know, that, uh, something that is, you know, grown, uh, that does not require to kill animals, uh, that, that, you know, has bad. health benefits, environmental benefits, you know, uh, cow farming, that's a huge, huge ecological issue. I mean, you look in Brazil, they're deforestating tons and tons of forest so that they can create cow farms and then cows, you know, release methane, mm-hmm. um, methane. So my, no, you're fine. You're fine. Still have a bit of an accent. <laughs> you're chilling, man. You're chilling. Um, and you know, this is not sustainable. I mean, we don't, we got to think about, you know, the future, the future generations, you know, not, not just ourselves, not, right. not just our kids, but our grandkids, the ones that come after them. Um, I think, you know, if we are to survive as a species long term, first, what we got to do is, is address that. I think that's the most pressing issue. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I agree with you. I was, I brought up that question merely because I wanted to see how, you know, say you did decide to go with choice number two. You went with What do you think? Number. What do I think? Yeah. I think I 100% agree with you on the point that cultured meat could be the future and it would be way more beneficial. Might even save us a lot of a lot of the potential uh, errors that may happen within our societies in the future. I mean, if you think about it, 2050, we're expected to have closer to 10 billion people on the planet. 7 right. billion has already driven, like, for example... We always talk about the stigma of African children starving. It's driven so many of us into, you know, impoverished states, whether it be uh, food-wise, sustainability, or, or economically. We all, or a bunch of us on this planet are already suffering. So I think with the introduction and the mass production of um, cultured meats, we can see a rise of, um, you know, satiated people in terms of hunger, we'd probably be able to, at some point, if we mass produce it enough, lower the world hunger meter if to the bot to zero or you know somewhere close around it. Not just that. I think here's an okay. As much as I agree, like I said, I think one big issue we face are the communities that are so far against it because it's against their 
their code of you know religion or i guess moral code which doesn't really make sense if you think about it this would be such a better moral choice than continuing to slaughter and mass produce cows who only have the fate of becoming food five years down the line because they've grown to a hefty amount you know i mean i, I think i think there's also you know th this idea that you know natural is always good right um natural is usually good it's not always good there's and, and that can you know encompass all, all sorts of things i mean um you know discern behaviors that you know us humans have that are natural that doesn't mean they're good that's why we have society that's why religion was a thing i mean you know yeah. or is a thing right yeah. it's to to counteract these these uh negative natural human instincts that you know we have homicide rape all of these things we have laws exactly in place. animals you see animals kill and rape each other all the time you know you see them fight for territory it's natural it's not good but it's natural mm -hmm. um so you know i, I think th the same thing goes with that um i i think you know meat in, in a lot of parts in many parts of the world was was you know something that was often reserved for you know the wealthy, right? Yeah, upper class. Uh, upper class, Royalty. exactly. You look in medieval Europe, for example, the, the average peasant was not eating, you know, uh, beef on a regular basis. They, they would eat bread. fish. Fish. They would bread. eat fish. Fish was actually a pretty, pretty cheap uh, good back then. Mm. Fish and you know vegetables, basically. That's what they, um, you know, but now you know, we we decided we, we wanted you know meat to, to not be something that you have on occasion, you know, something, it's something that we have on a regular basis. I mean, you look at fast food, right? It's just, it's cheap. It's, a, you know, it's widely available. It's mass produced. Uh, what I want to do is, you know, replace all the mass uh, farming that we have and replace that with cultured meat. Okay. Eventually, I, I hope that that's what's going to happen. Okay, okay. So obviously we went really down uh, a pretty deep rabbit hole on, on your second idea but i think the second idea um is a really good one because you would enter you try and be pushing for essentially a revolution within the culinary uh industry i mean you're you're trying to push culture meat which is obviously I, taboo as of right now i mean i think it's it's going to be you know pushed anyways regardless of whether i do it or not but oh, i definitely yeah. want to be part of that push yeah, um, yeah yeah of course a part of the revolution of uh the food industry man that would be insane you know that's fucking great. But um, I guess another another thing uh, is another issue that I see, and I, I don't I don't mean to bring up so many issues, but it's just, you know, to see how well you'd be able to handle these, I guess, um, is right now, cultured meat, you said, is really expensive. It's not mass produced, none of that. It's still in the works, right? If you're trying to open a shop, and I guess, let's say five years from now, cultured meat may not be, uh-oh, Oh, oh yep. okay, okay. Col yeah, cultured meat may not be mass produced in about five years, but when you come out of college and you want to open up a uh, a restaurant, how how will you go about it? Will you stick to plan one for now and then in the future do plan two? Well, what I'm gonna do is you know it, it's already it's already uh uh you know uh, producible. It, mm -hmm. It's already uh you know the technology is there. Uh, it's just not affordable. So if it's not affordable, then, you know, I mean, I'm still going to do it, but, you know, obviously it's going to be some very, very expensive, uh, um, it's going to be a very expensive menu, but yeah. I still want to do it. I mean, you, it's um, going to be a but, pretty big wall. you know, it's, you know, um, either ways, it's, I think it's going to be, you know, bring, bring, bring the idea out there and, and bring the concept out there and, you know, it, it's going to pave the way to, to mainstreaming it, I think. Right, right, right. Here, hold on, real quick. Let me just adjust my microphone volume here. There we go. That's better. Okay. And uh, plan number one, obviously, was the traditional, you know, uh, traditional restaurant, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, it, it's funny. There's really these two things that fascinate me. You know, it's it's you know, I, I'm very attached to, to to you know my roots. You know, my culture and everything. Right. Uh, and you know. Um, I, 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 I want to spread that culture, you know, uh, and at the same time, I'm also, you know, I'm, I'm also a nerd, you know, I, I love, 
you know, I love uh, reading on about, you know, uh, dark energy. Uh, right. You know, I love watching Neil deGrasse Tyson podcast with Joe, Andrew Rogan, you know, fucking Elon Musk, and SpaceX. I mean, I just, I honestly, I want to live, you know, a hundred years and, and be able to, you know, do what you love to do, right? I want to be able to see that, you know, I want to yeah. be able to witness this progress. I'd, I'd love to see to the progress. Made. You know, I really think Elon Musk, and I know a lot of other people 100% agree that Elon Musk is definitely another forefront runner when it comes to, uh, you know, he's, he's pushing the boundaries again of space travel, et cetera, et cetera. But I, I, I'd like to, I'd like to ask a question. It has to do with space, right? And it's been on my mind. I, I, I'm sure it's been on your mind. I know you've mentioned it before, but how do you, what do you, what are your thoughts on, on dark matter? You know, cause we talk about space all the time, right? There's, we have this yeah. whole expanse of basically what we consider to be an infinite expanse. Although I can tell you later that the universe may not be infinite. Uh, it's still progressing, though. It's still being created. But we also have this theory. A lot of scientists have this theory about dark matter and that it's basically we have we're in normal matter, light matter. Right. But there are parts of the universe yep. where it's dark matter. And then there's other one called weird matter, if I remember. But let's stick with dark matter for now. What are your thoughts on that? What do you think it actually is or what, what would it do if we encountered it? Well, we don't know what it is. Right. Uh, we know that we can't see it, and we know that it's there because uh, of of the 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 effect that it has on on, on the matter that we're able to see. Right. I, what was it like? Seventy five percent of the universe is dark matter. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. So we, so most of our universe is something that we know nothing about. We theorize that seventy five percent is dark matter. We're not sure. We're still not sure. But it is a theory. Yeah, it is. It is yeah. theorized that it's seventy five percent is dark matter. Yeah. Interesting. It really makes you think, you know, uh, how, 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 you know, that, you know, we thought we, we, we understood our universe much better than, than we than we actually did, but we really don't. Uh, it, it's fascinating. I, I think uh, finding out what it is, is is going to reveal a lot about our universe, its its creation, um, its future, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, th that is one thing that that's that there's one thing that that quite terrifies me actually it's uh you know the 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 idea of the universe uh dissolving into you know nothing. practically speaking nothingness right? right you know you think of the universe as, as this like one drop of blood in, in, in an infinite ocean right so it starts with a big bang and then just slowly slowly gets bigger and bigger but emptier and emptier mm -hmm. and cooler and cooler until it's nothing Basically, I mean, for for four purposes. Weird. I have a weird thought, right? We mentioned that 75% of our known universe, or the universe in general, is dark matter, correct? Yep. Have we ever thought, because, well, we don't know what dark matter is. We just know it's nope. there, right? We can't see it. Currently it currently goes right through us. Right. All the time. All the time? Doesn't, well, no, I mean, I don't know about all the time, but, but, but it, it happens, happen. you know. It happens. It goes... We we go through dark matter goes through us. We it does not interact. It does not. We can't feel it. But damn, it, it I was see passes I, through us. If that wasn't the case, I was gonna say, what if dark matter was nothingness itself, essentially being prior to the Big Bang, there was nothingness, correct? Mm -hmm. What if? Well, I mean, but well, we don't. We don't. We don't know. We don't know. But well, we theorized that it was essentially just nothingness, but then a bunch of, I guess, gas. No, a, well, a bunch of gas was created post Big Bang. Huh. I mean, if, what was it? Neutrons and uh, protons were, were created a uh, few, I think, was it a million years or thousand? You know, right, uh, yeah. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not qualified to talk about this stuff. Right, but, right. Know. Well, neither but, neither am I, but it's good to talk about yeah. in general. But it was something like that. I mean, prior to the Big Bang, we don't know exactly what there was, but we theorized that there was nothing, right? It was just complete nothingness. I mean, but what if that nothingness is what we consider to be dark matter? We don't know nothingness fully, do we? Because when we see nothing in our room or nothing when we close our eyes, there's still something. There are still particles. There are still, uh, you know, just quantum particles. There's still quantum realm, anything. You know, there's still particles. But we don't truly know nothing. When we see dark matter, we can't see it, right? So no. what, if, what if dark matter is nothing? We think there's something, but it's actually just a hole that's left after the Big Bang. Like the Big Bang well, hits. So there's a it's, there's a pretty cool TED talk I saw uh, the other day. Mm. 
Uh, let me pull it up. I'm gonna send you the link. Yeah, man. Uh, you should definitely watch it sometime. Uh, What's it about? See. It well, dark matter. Oh, okay. Well, I should have assumed. Um, uh, here, the search for dark matter, and it's a TED talk. The search for dark for dark matter, uh, and what we found so far. Um, and so, in it, uh, the 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 woman pre presenting uh, uh, dark matter uh, explains that. Um, had had there not been dark matter, uh, the galaxies and, and stars would not have formed, because you would not have enough of these uh, clusters of, of of you know of matter to to, to you know uh, generate enough gravity to, to, to you know pull them together. Mm. So so we know it's there. We can calculate uh, the. the percentage of you know dark energy in our, in our universe but we don't know what it is but we know it's there so what you're saying is it sort of acted as these these walls that sort of allowed normal matter to be pushed together because everywhere else was dark matter so it was essentially like enclosing a bunch of matter normal matter closer together that allowed us to form these stars these particles everything like that well okay hold on if you if that's the case right you said that dark matter, if it wasn't for dark matter, we wouldn't be able to have clusters of these of matter to form, right? Or to form particles, stars, all that. It, without dark matter, the, the galaxies and stars would not have been able to form. Okay, so with the, going off of that, from the little information I know, you can sort of think or theorize, I can theorize, that it acted as a pushing factor or because the rest of it was filled, say it's a box, most of it's filled with random blocks right the the smaller parts are filled with more capable things right things that for example in this case would be matter so these blocks are blocking it from escaping and making it wider less dense to create these stars right so right. if that's the case right the big bang sort of happened in the sense that something came together compressed together and caused an explosion right does that mean that well what i'm expansion the the but an expansion, expansion for what reason? Because it was an explosion. We it was it was a bang. I mean, the heat emanating people, from it. people apparently apparently the, the the term bang was was not very accurate. Okay, so what yeah. caused it to expand? Why is there so much heat from the expanse, though? Um, we can. You're you're asking stuff that's way out of my league. I there. understand. I understand. But my, my the reason why I'm asking is because I mean we've witnessed explosions ourselves, right? Something practical, something I can think of, something I can solidify, which is. Obviously, we should. From my, be. from my, from my understanding, as a, as a simpleton, as, as someone with, with, you know, not even a fraction of, of intelligence. Uh, uh, I don't as believe that, man. Who, who study this? Okay, as people who study well, this shit, but I still believe you, know, you have, you have as, intelligence, bro. As, as some, as some guy that, that you know, it's a business major that just likes to watch this stuff for entertainment, mm. you know, out of curiosity. From what I understand, it, it's essentially there. There was such con the the universe was so condensed that you know, it you know expanded. expanded. Right. I want to go. I want to. I want to try and research a little bit on it. But that it is, was that is so interesting. small. Hmm? No, no. It's just an interesting thing to think about. You know, because yeah. if say now let's just say let's go let's go a little bit with this right. Say it was. An expanse because it was an explosion in a sense, right? Say it was compressed, exploded, whatever was compressed, exploded, in a sense, caused the Big Bang. Let's just That's say the elastic theory of the universe, the idea that the universe right. goes in, in continuous cycles of of expansion and then compression, and brought back together and then expands right. again. Uh, essentially, time is just infinite, so so the universe is never created. It, it just it just repeats it's just itself, repeating and, itself, and it's always existing. We're just in an, in an elastic part where it's expanding. We're, yeah, we're just in one phase of it. That's and, interesting. I've never you know, heard of this theory. And it, well, so yeah, essentially, it's a theory that you know the universe had no beginning. It, essentially, it, it was always there, and it's always doing this. And going in out like a ball, right? like a rubber ball or yeah. something, right? And so what's what's interesting about this this theory? Not that I believe in it, because uh, I, I don't I don't really you know given what I've read so far, I, I don't I don't seem to. I don't think that uh, the universe is going to be retracting mm. eventually. Uh, I mean, things aren't slowing down, but 
Um, you know, there's a lot that we don't know. But if it, if if that theory were to be true, here's an interesting question: Does that mean that this moment that we're having right now is it going to be? Has it happened before? Is it going to happen again in the next universe? Or is there some some wiggle room, right? right. Can can things happen? Once a little it. differently in each repetition of the universe. Is there some degree of freedom, or, or is it just an exact replica uh, every time? Replica every single time. We would have this exact conversation every single time. Every historical moment happens the same way every single time. Well, that would be interesting if that was not the case, because with that, with that sort of answer the idea of multiple different possibility parallel universes would it or would it not because it happened in the past you know because parallel would verbatim would mean happening at the same time but different outcome i mean i guess in that sense since you know time is repeating itself you could say you know it, there's no you know you can i guess forget the idea of past and future right it's just but is, is time repeating one itself? repetition well i mean if that, that, that's one possibility if the universe was was you know elastic i mean that that time everything uh i mean everything you know uh every, every motion happens you know because of a force that acted upon it you know Speaking previously of... so mm -hmm. oh i so, just you know, wanted to say I, I, this is gee, i'll let you get whatever you wanted to say real quick because i wanted to sort of change it a little bit the topic because i just saying speaking of something but if you want to finish your sentence go for it well you, you no i'll let you, I'll let you, go, I'll let you okay, go okay 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 i was gonna yeah. say speaking of experiences that may have happened you know before or again right i want to come to another topic on deja vu all right huh? and i've had this theory sort of just boiling in my head now hold on let me pull this up real quick right I've had this theory. Theory or hypothesis? Head. Hypothesis. It's not a theory. It's just a hypothesis. Thank you for the correction. It is just a hypothesis. Merely that, nothing more. Because, well, there's no mathematical evidence. There's none of that. It's just words. Just an idea thoughts. that you have to test out. Exactly. Just an idea I had to test out. Now, let me find the right... Every theory starts from hypothesis. True. That's true. That is true. I just need to find the right account if you don't mind just give me a little bit i need to find the right count okay it is a theory on retro causality now retro causality is a theory in its own and it's a quantum physics theory that um particles here uh to explain it simply all right according to this theory when something is done to one particle in the present the effects travel back in time to a point when two the two particles were close together all right uh, in mm -hmm. that way, information from the future is transferred between the two particles. These effects then carry toward into the future without violating relativity. So, with that being said, information travels from the future to the present. In this theory, due to the quantum, due to quantum, uh, the quantum reality, right, the quantum field, something goes on in which the particles are able to travel back in time somehow. It may have to do with um, superpositioning, et cetera, et cetera. Like how they're always random uh, if you turn into computer numbers, zeros, zeros and ones, you know? So it, it's sort of both a zero and a one at the same time. A anyways, we're straying from retrocausality. That's the theory of retrocausality. Now, here's my little take on that, all right? It mentions how particles can transfer information from the future into the present or the past that allows them to sort of have that information of when they came into contact in the future, right? Without violating relativity. Here's where I'm sort of, my hypothesis comes into play. You've heard about deja vu. We all have heard of deja vu. We've yeah. all heard of deja vu, right? Okay. When you experience deja vu, and I know there's a lot of studies, fuck the studies, listen to me. We've all experienced deja vu maybe once or twice. I've had it a lot recently, all right? in which I'll be in the moment and I'll remember that moment. But for some reason, I'll remember more to that moment. So I know the events that are about to come up. But what's weird is that the events differ from what actually happens in the current reality, all right? And so here's where my hypothesis comes into play. What if retrocausality 
happens within the neurons within our head, right? So the quantum particles, the quarks that are happening, the particles within our head that are inside of the neuro, the neurons, all of these cells, what if they're undergoing retrocausality that makes me, in, in mass, in mass, that makes it so that so many of these quantum particles in my brain or in anybody's brain experience retrocausality between different particles that allow them to foresee the future but the future isn't exactly how it is now because it's changed due to the information gathered from the future between the particles. So that causes me, for example, to have deja vu. But the, the events that happen after that deja vu moment that I remember are different from what happens now. If I tell you one real quick, I had a deja vu moment in which I remember one of my friends, I had to call her, right? I told them to do something. I said, uh, talk back to like your parent or some shit, right? Because they were being a dick to the to my friend, and so I told her that, and so she did. And I remembered having deja vu in that moment, and I was like, "Fuck, I fucked up. I was supposed to tell her not to fucking tell her this because she'll get grounded for a month, right?" I remember and, she came back, and so she didn't. She got grounded for a month. She didn't get grounded for a month. She did not. Wow. She ended up. Oh, she not. No, she she did not get grounded for a month. This time around, she didn't. I thought I fucked up. This time she didn't. This time she had a heartfelt conversation with her mom and everything sorted out. And I remember sitting there, I was like, wait a, wait a moment, wait, a, wait, 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 wait. This was supposed to go on differently. And it's happened multiple times too. Ever, I think it was this year, I've had it the most times I've had deja vu in my life in one year, right? Most yep. of these times now, I have deja vu, right? And this is just a personal experience where I'll, I'll be in the moment, I'll be like, holy shit, deja vu, I remember all this, right? But then I remember a future that never comes, outcomes and uh, effects to my causes that never come to reality. Matter of fact, it happens differently. A choice gets made different. Somebody says something different or, or we take a different turn than I remember. But the weirdest thing is I remember it like it was clear to me that day that this was supposed to happen this way rather than what's actually happening. And it fucks with my brain. It fucks with me because I'm like, why is this happening? This should have went this way according to my fucking mind. This is crazy. And so that's why it drives me further to believe that retro causality plays a deeper part, a deeper role than where we sort of are when it comes to digging information on deja vu in the modern day, the modern the modern time. You know, all our theories are about, oh, the brain just, you know, rechecks your memory to see if you're remembering all these things, right? Like you have self-checks that your brain does, et cetera, et cetera. I think that my hypothesis may actually make sense. And I want us to, you know, first prove retro causality because that is a theory. I want us to prove it if it's right. Then we move into my hypothesis. Then I start making a grounded theory on it. But what are your thoughts on it? I, I want to know because sometimes I think I'm crazy because it's stupid at times. But other times I'm not really sure. I believe some crazy theories too. So, you know, like simulation. I believe that we're in a simulation. So. Right. I want to hear that after. But I want to hear your thoughts first on this. How do you feel about it? Um... Well, I've definitely had deja vus before. Mm -hmm. um, the way I've, I've usually thought about them is, well, maybe I had a, a similar experience before, and so it's my brain remembering, hey, this is how 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 you should approach the situation. Right. But you know, I mean, yeah, if it's some, I mean, maybe it it isn't you know uh, a, a similar past experience. Maybe it's you know this happened before and somehow you're conscious of it and now able to make a different decision and change the future right okay um well, but here's the thing and right you're right it, it's like a weird feeling like maybe you can change it but but the, the other issue when i've had these deja vu moments this year for example or last year because i had it a little bit last year is that when you have it, an event, when I felt it, the event was supposed to go a different way. Somebody was supposed to respond a different way or something. But that person themselves, like I said, had a different response to what I remember. So, so if I understand, you had a deja vu of telling someone to do something. Mm -hmm. And you believe that there was going to be a negative outcome. I remember that, that there was a negative outcome. She came you remembered, back to you me. remembered. Okay, so you remembered a negative outcome, but this time around, 
there was a positive outcome. Right. It was a sort of positive outcome. Yeah, they had a nice heartfelt conversation is what she told me. She ended up crying. Right. It was a positive outcome from what was originally thought, like, remembered to be a negative outcome where she got grounded for a month. It's just a weird thought process to me. I, I, it, was, it, it was weird. That was one that I remember very particularly because I remember feeling so fucking terrible thinking that I was like, I was like, yo, I'm going to... Dooming her, her, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to get her fucking grounded. Like, I remember feeling dread. But then she came back and I was like, what the fuck? But yeah, nah. Now, now you mentioned, you mentioned that you believe in simulation theory. Right. That was fascinating to me. You texted me earlier. I was like, you're like, yeah, I believe in simulation theory. I was like, huh, you do now. And now I want to hear what makes you, what makes you believe in it? And will you convince me? All right. So here's essentially the, the, the idea. Um, you know, since the dawn of man, we've created uh, replicas of, of things that, that, you know, of objects around us. You know, started with cave paintings, right? You know, you, you draw a buffalo, for example. Or I don't know if it was a buffalo, but some animal. Yeah. Um, you know, that's what you're seeing on the painting on the on the wall is not an actual buffalo, it's a it's a painting of a buffalo. You know, and, and then you know, for a time paintings got, you know, better and better, you know, you look at the Renaissance and these some of these, you know, paintings were almost, you know, picture like. And then you get black and white pictures. Then you get colored pictures, you get movies, you know, I mean, not in that order, but, um, you know, you get video games, mm. VR headset, right? Elon Musk is working on this, uh, on, on this thing. Uh, I think it's called the Neuro, full drive, neural, neural drive. drive. Yeah. Neural drive. You know, some device that, that go, that gets plugged into your head and then it connects w with different parts of your brain. Neuralink. Um, Sorry. That was right, Neuralink. So it's able to to um, it's able to send signals to your brain and receive signals to your brain, and so you know you you could. I mean that technology could you know have many uh, purposes. I mean it could you know, like cure blindness for example. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe even you know. People that are paralyzed. You know, maybe they could walk again, but it could also create, you know, the next level of, of you know, virtual reality, right? With like SAO. Exactly, SAO. Mm -hmm. And what you notice with all these, um, these improvements is that, well, you know, eventually if we keep progressing, we're going to create something that is so lifelike. I was going to say, um, you know, uh, indistinguishable from 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 this universe, which is you know what what other people have said when talking about simulations. But honestly, it doesn't have to be identical to this universe. It just has to be lifelike. Mm -hmm. You know, people. You know, um, it doesn't have to be like this universe. Just as long as it's you know believable. And so it got me thinking. You know, well, I, I mean, this is what actually. Well, I was thinking about what other people have been thinking. You know. Mm -hmm. But um, essentially, what what the, the argument was that if it's possible to create realistic simulations, and you can create you know multiple of them, the odds are that you are in one of these simulations versus the you know the one singular you know real or base world. Uh, there's a greater chance that you're in one of the simulations than that you are in one real world, right? Right. Let's say there's, you know, uh, 99 simulations in one real world. There's a 99% chance that you are in a simulation. Okay, you know, but just, I have a question now. All right? Yeah. Why would somebody create a simulation that is so mundane in comparison to what they could have created, say, magic, all that, like Skyrim, fucking hell. Who would not want to choose Skyrim over that? What makes what? you think they, did, they didn't do that, and then, but also did this? So for the people that were poor, lived here. Well, I mean, you know, maybe they were like, all right, you know what? We can create a trillion simulations. Okay. Why not create maybe five or ten that are kind of more mundane? Also, what is what is mundane? I mean, that's relative, right? It is mundane relative. compared to what? What if the base world is, you know, 
extremely boring compared to our world and, and you know to whoever's you know watching this this universe you know to them that what's going on here is crazy you know mm. i mean it's it's relative i guess okay that's i mean interesting. you know our world's our world's not that boring i mean you know we got i mean you know, not not i'm saying that's a great thing but i mean we got you know wars plagues famines you know you're saying it's not you boring know. in the sense that nothing's happening at all there's, there's a lot of stuff happening emotional in this world. shit happening yeah like there's a, a lot of things happening yeah right, right okay i don't think this world is as boring as people claim claim it is you know in comparison which is a relative thing in comparison, in comparison to our entertainment yeah right right it but, would be nice if we could create would you okay? I got another question. So so here here here's the thing. Okay. And this is what Elon Musk said: the base world would be pretty boring because if our entertainment is more entertaining than, you know, uh, than our real world, then if this is an entertainment, then the real world is more boring than this world. Mm. But I also think there's other purposes for creating simulation other than entertainment. Like the uh, Matrix. Well, that's one example, but. I was thinking even just, uh, you know, for uh, statistical purposes, you know, testing out uh, theories, testing out maybe political ideas, testing out wars, all that stuff. Maybe maybe the world that, that you know, the real world is, is not, you know, maybe simulations are going to be something in the near future and the real world is something that is not that distant from the future. And so, you know, in order for us to not believe that we're in a simulation, that to create a simulation that was, you know, before uh, the, the timeline the of there time. being a simulation. But, you know, a, a world that is close enough for it to be relevant to, to the information that they're trying to extract, right? Mm. If, if they want to, if they want to, you know, test out certain ideas, you know, but they don't want to actually, you know, have repercussions in their real world to create a simulation and then have those ideas tested out here. Do you think... Hmm. Do you think because, you know, what we're seeing now, I'm not saying this was the main topic of, of the potential creation of a simulation, but do you think the world that we're seeing now, where we're slowly being drifted into chaos, I mean, you see people, uh, the BLM movement has become really crazy nowadays. I mean, obviously, the majority of us are very nice at protesting, but there are the rioters. You have, uh, you know, people against other countries. China's getting worse. When I mean, you have all these chaotic things happening, do you think it was all... This simulation could have one of the reasons could have been to see what would happen if if yada 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 you know this this and that you know what would the outcome be and this is one of their questions and one of their theories is like okay you know we can use this simulation to test what would have happened if we had say uh, a country like America or a country like China you know because they're probably yeah. I, I mean for all we know they could be a utopic society I don't know for all I we mean, know they don't have free will. I I, I don't have any uh, any particular beliefs on on, on why someone uh, you know the the exact intentions of whoever creates the simulation does. I just I simply believe that that you know given you know what, what I previously said, I, I believe it's more likely that we're in a simulation. It doesn't really impact the way the way I, I live my life, mm. except maybe it gives me some some you know hope. Uh, in a sense for for the future because it creates a whole unknown universe out there and right. given our current understanding it seems to me that this universe is going to end eventually which is you know kind of terrifying but if there's something else out there then you know something we can maybe there's to. more to it you know that that would be interesting yeah. so you know the whole idea of heaven and hell you know you're getting judged for what you did in this life Right. Yeah. I mean, actually, yeah. I, I do. I do think that um, you know that it is actually you know a pretty good possibility that you know religions was you know people testing out some ethical conducts and they were like, yeah, you know what? I changed my mind. Uh, let's throw in a new religion. You know. Right. But what if it was like? What if it's true that there is like that heaven and hell outcome in which? You know, you are probably AI that's, that's testing. That's them pulling us out of a simulation and being yeah. like, hey, or putting us into a different simulation, you know, on the or, next or, level. Or like when we come out of the simulation, say we finally reached a real world, right? They saw right. our lives, say an AI judged us to be guilty, right? You get sent you're to like, jail. You're like, you're a shitty person. You get sent you're to real good. jail, you're killed off. And if you were good, you get to live in that society that may actually be better for all we know. I yeah, I have thought about I have thought about that. Right. Um, I it mean, would be interesting. 
Damn, I guess I'm gonna be butchered and gonna. Yo, say. Go, I'm gonna go to real world hell. Fuck. I guess I'm going to real world hell. It's getting put down like old yelling. Yeah. But no, no, okay. One, 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 but one, actually, two. you know what? Did you get that idea from the SAO elicitation? No. You, oh. you gotta watch it. It's the new SAO oh, season. Oh, no, I've seen elicitation. I just have no idea which one what you're talking Oh, is it when they they break the rules, they become a knight, but their memories are erased and stored? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, that's not what I thought. I actually just thought about it. So we talked about it in the previous podcast before it got deleted. So, so I thought I thought maybe you know, uh, and yeah, maybe we're AIs that that are being tested, you know, and we have this like kind of kind of guideline, but then we're also maybe supposed to you know follow our heart mm -hmm. and uh, and and break some rules if if they don't, um, you know, abide by own personal judgment. Mm -hmm. Maybe, I mean, who knows? Who knows? Okay, all right, real quick. This is a very, I got a very uh, hot topic question for as far as VR goes. If you yeah. had the opportunity to throw this life away, right? Yes. Okay, you already knew. Uh, yep, yep. Yep, <laughs> same, right, so would I. Just go straight, yo, just go straight. I knew what you were going to ask. I was like, yep. We've talked about uh, it before. We talked about actually, it. Actually, I mean, like, aside from us, you know, even if we're on a radiant simulation, I do believe that eventually we are going to convert into you know life in a simulation but i think that's going to happen eventually i mean oh, you're seeing dude. it slowly happen imagine right? imagine like all these anime isekais where they all have dude it's a man's dream to be isekai mm -hmm. and have a fucking harem where you're the hero and you have to defeat the demon king what the fuck imagine being able to isekai yeah. into a fucking world of your own creation for example yep. and it feels yeah. real Fuck I this mean, world. <laughs> I'm gone. I mean, I mean, you see us, you see us going, you know, more and more into the virtual. I mean, you know, with social media, right? People almost live on social media, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, part it's part of their life is what is on social media. You know? I think it's, it's not sad. Just real life. I think it's sad. It's well, yes, and I think yeah, and yeah, yeah. Take. I think well, it depends. It depends what you do. It depends what you do. Right, you know? right, think, you're right, you're right. I think the internet is amazing in a sense that you can pretty much access any information you want. I mean, you know, all the stuff I'm, I'd say 80% of the things I learned, I didn't learn in class. I learned, you know, you know, watching TED world. Talks. Yeah, right, right, on, on right. YouTube, all that shit, yeah. Exactly. Um, it, it also allows us to, to, you know, connect. I mean, right now we're talking, right? Exactly. Yeah. We're what, we're, we're what, like, like eight hours away right now from About each eight other? eight hours, yeah, yeah. Right? I miss you, bro. You know, Come home. I missed you, bro. Come oh, this home, winter man. break, this winter break. Sounds good, man. So, you know, this, it, it, it gives us a lot of opportunity in that sense. Um, and, you, you know, I mean, video games are fun, right? You, you like, play video games, you know, mm. you, like, I love Skyrim too, I love Fallout. Fuck yeah, bro, fuck yeah. I'm, I'm going to get myself a nice PC this winter. Sounds good. And, uh, I'm gonna be able to mod the hell out of my follow. It's gonna be. We're getting the Discord calls and modding together. <laughs> oh yeah. Hell yeah, bro. Um. But speaking of though, speaking of, yeah. you want to get a new computer this winter, right? Yeah. Dude, the next gen is coming out this fall, the end of fall into winter. How do you feel about the new next gen games? If you're getting a new computer, you're getting these next gen games. I mean, Cyberpunk. How yeah, do you feel I about can't that? wait for Cyberpunk. That's. And, uh, I mean, that's also why I wanted to get a new computer so I can run it. Oh, with yeah. the nice graphics and everything. Oh yeah, dude. Oh fucking yeah. That would be so Damn, nice. I am so excited for that game. Yeah. And I thought about it. If if this was the world that we lived in, would you would you get all the cybernetic enhancements or would you stay I'm natural? I'm not going to lie. I would. I would. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Fuck it, dude. If you're staying natural, you can be picked on by cybernetic uh, people too. I would, I would go I would go crazy. I would go like, crazy. It, <laughs> I don't know if I'd be human anymore. You know. I mean, I'd, I'd get my eyes changed to, you know, be able right, to see all the like crazy stuff. Miles you know, down if you needed to. Like, have 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 robot legs, you know, they, they can just, like, exactly. run really fast. Arms know, that account for recoil on guns, or if you're a surgeon, your hands are so steady. Like, oh, my God. Like, yeah. I don't know. It's the future, man. It is a future. They have, they have glow-in-the-dark tattoos, too. What the fuck? And actually, actually, um, those apparently exist today, but... From what I understand, they only they only work with uh with UV light. They don't actually like glow in the oh, dark. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But I, I kind of wanted to get one. Mm -hmm. Um, so, hmm. I kind of wanted to get uh one of those uh you know 
UV light tattoos. I would wait till there's actual glow in the dark, because that would be fucking fire to see with a glow in the dark tat. Well, here's the thing. Um, I wanted to get it on my forearm, right? Mm. And, you know, if it, it would be very, very noticeable if it's, if it's glow in the dark, right? Yeah. And, yeah. you know, that might not be good for, for jobs and, oh, true, you know, true, 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 true. stuff. That's so true. I was thinking, you know, UV light in a way is, you know, it, it's a very specific setting where, 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 it, where it comes out. Apparently it's not very visible, uh, you know, in, in regular light. It would be a cool, like, fucking party thing too. Have you, have you, you know, remember in Skyrim, the, the Dragonborn, uh, uh, you know. The shout? What was it? Yeah, but, but you know, the, the shout uh, that you get in the, the expansion, the DLC. Is it where you get the armor? Where you get the the fl the fluorescent the, the like kind of armor around yeah, you, the dragon yeah. armor that that lights up. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. don't talk about, and yeah. he gets those like kind of flames on his arms. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I kind of wanted something like that on this form. Fire! That would be fire. And then I, I thought about like like maybe uh like brotherhood in Hebrew. Oh shit! For brotherhood like, steel, or dark brotherhood? Huh? Dark brotherhood? No, or bro brotherhood. Just brotherhood. Just bro well, yeah, but what would it symbolize for? All right, so multiple things. I didn't even think about Brotherhood of Steel, but I am also a big Brotherhood of Steel guy. So you know what? We'll we'll add this there. But it was more just you know. First, it was like I'm very close to my brother, you know. Okay. Um. So you know, he means a lot to me. Yeah. Shout out to. Alex. So there was that, and then there's uh the the French uh saying, uh with the French uh what's it called. Um. You know, liberty, equality, and fraternity. Yeah. That's it, it's it's a French. Uh, I, I'm I'm looking for a word. Phrase. Motto. It, motto, motto. There we go. So liberté, égalité, fraternité. So brotherhood is is you know like frater fraternité, you know. Mm. And so I was thinking about getting that maybe uh, liberty and you know old English cursive, you know I don't know somewhere on my ribs maybe or. My chest, I don't know, and then maybe an equal an equal sign for the equality, right. you know, maybe on my like trap or my neck. That'd be fire. That'd be fire. Yeah. What about Hold on. I'm, I'm, yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna do that though, because I already have one tattoo, and I, I don't want to end up being one of those you know guys with like tattoos all over their body. You know? Right, 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 right. Because that's a little overboard, but like you know, having a decent yeah. amount is good. I got you. I got you. I got you. It is kind of an idea I, I've been having for the past week. I don't honestly, man. I don't know if I plan on getting a tattoo, but I wanted, I, I want to, but it's not good as a doctor. I'm told that you shouldn't have tattoos as a surgeon, you know. Well, where would you want it? Uh, probably on my forearm. Yeah, forearms are kind of visible. Yeah, I know that's the issue. Yeah. See, yeah, my my tattoo, like you know, I I wear like you know button up shirts, you know, I'll even roll up the sleeves up to my forearm and you know can't see anything. Mm. I don't know. I like also having just, you know, just a body without any tattoos as yeah. well, you know. I don't know. It's probably been a stigma of my family. Fuck. <laughs> it's probably just been a stigma of my family. You like, you like being, you know, like when you're naked, you're fully naked, you know. Yeah, yeah, right. There's no... I, I don't know why I think of it that way, but... No, see, I was going like, to say naked, think, all right, but... Like, I am, there's blank. Right, there's I was going to say naked, you know? too. Like, it's just, it's a blank canvas, you know. It's, it's just a... Yeah. It's just your body, you know. You don't got a canvas. Yeah. It's, it, it, there's nothing filling there. I fuck with it, but uh, I you also know you really forget that. you have one after a while. I, yeah. I remember when I first had my tattoo. Every time I saw it, I was like, "Damn, I have a tattoo." <laughs> there is permanent <laughs> tattoo on my arm. It's on my arm. What the? It's fuck? on my arm. It's not going away. Like I, I did this, you know. Yeah. Oh my god. But you know, after a while, you just you forget it's even there. Right, right, right. I mean, it's a cool ass tattoo though. As well, I like it. I mean, I'm I'm happy. I I'm, don't regret it. I'm still happy. I, I got yeah, it. Of course, that shit's fire as fuck, man. Show the Thanks, fucking bro. people. Show the people. Show them. Yeah, let's fucking see. All right. Uh, hey, see. that shit's fire, dude. Do you see that shit? Damn, it's just right there. That's so cool. But yeah, nah, that's, that's, that's kind of basic. <laughs> hey, but it looks cool, and that's all that matters. Has zero meaning. That's all that. Hey, but it looks cool. <laughs> I, I like that. I like the design. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's all the meaning I need. And brotherhood would be a pretty cool addition to it, you know, on your fucking forearm right here. Brotherhood would be yeah. a pretty cool addition. 
All right, but I think we've exhausted all the topics that we wanted to talk about. I, I feel as if this podcast was good. I do plan on posting it maybe maybe Saturday since I don't have a video as of right now to post on Saturday. I think I'll post it on Saturday if that's good with you, yeah? Yep. All right, sounds good. Well, chat, uh, you know, hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. It's something we want to try doing a little bit more frequently, maybe, uh, you know, once a month, I think, we'd be able to have a good amount of topics we could build up over a month. Uh, I mean, you know, have have the people you know send send their send uh send, send ideas you know right ideas send your feedback you know let us know what y'all thought about the podcast uh it's something i you know i it's been on my mind you know i've talked about it on streams a couple of times me and Vic were like we should do a podcast and i'm glad we were able to get one done because it's honestly you know, fun what's that actually it was one last thing i, I kind of wanted to briefly mention but to me you know the purpose of life part of it is is really learning you know as much as you can. I mean, all the information that's out there, that's one of the wonders of the earth, right? I mean, just, just you know, going outside, going hiking, you know, appreciating the beauty of, of, of the world, but is also appreciating the knowledge that we've accumulated. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you guys send us, you know, ideas and, you know, we then look it up and, and learn some about that, that's just expanding, you know, like what we know, you know, and that's, that's amazing, you know? I think that's truly a fuck. That was, I'm at a loss of words, man. That was a fucking great thing to to end up on, my God. Because you know when you go on YouTube, for example, right? It mm. shows stuff and you're recommended. So right. let's say I watch stuff about astrophysics, you know, I watch stuff about video games or, you know, whatever. It's going to keep showing me things on these topics. So, you know, in a sense, it's it's great that, you know, YouTube has this recommendation thing because, you know, I can see stuff that, that I know I'm going to be interested in. But it kind of limits me into, you know, seeing new things in a sense too mm. so yeah if you guys have some ideas i would love to hear them i would as well you know me uh especially vic too he's if he's my friend you know my friends also love to quench our thirst for more knowledge but uh, if there's if there's one thing that i definitely agree we should leave them on is that one of the great wonders as you've said of this planet and of, of our existence is to you know have this thirst for more knowledge and to gain it because we have created a community over the thousands of years of man and now we have and history shared. and all that yeah and, and shared it shared our thoughts and now Transfer, we have science yeah. we have medicine we have all these great things so just remember that i mean it, i'm sure it will help you just reignite that desire to learn for more and i'm sure that will help everybody uh you know in life but uh with that being said y'all have yourselves a damn good one Vic, we're gonna end it off here. You have any any, any last notes to say to the people? Or anything? Thank you guys for watching. Uh, peace. Peace. <laughs> peace out. I'm yeah. not good at this YouTube stuff. I'm nah, sorry. Nah, you're fine. You're fine. Kind you're of fine. a noob. <laughs> but I'll, I'll learn. I'll learn. I'll yeah, be man. I'll be more more professional. All right, or not professional. I don't know. What's what would the correct word be? Professional. Peace. <laughs>